Hi guys, I'm Megan Brightwood and welcome to my channel, or if you're a returning viewer, then hi, nice to see you again. I'm so glad that you're back, especially because today's video is probably my most exciting video to date. It's a how to knit video on a sweater, and I have never done a how to knit sweater video on this channel, but I'm so pleased with how this turned out. So it's a little toddler cardigan and it's worked in garter stitch from the top down, very basic, but it also includes a little teddy bear hood. Is this not the cutest thing? I love how it turned out. It's made out of a uh, Cascade Hampton yarn. So it is a uh, cotton and linen blend. And I do have other sizes available um, over on my blog. And as always with my how to knit videos, I do include the written instructions over on my blog and I can link that down below. Uh, but yeah, this cardigan can be worked in uh, zero to three months up to 3T. So lots of options available for you there. Uh, this particular one is a 2T, so that's what I'm going to be sharing with you in today's video. This one is for my son and that's, you know, the size he wears. So anyway, if you are interested in seeing how to make this little cardigan with the teddy bear hood, then just keep on watching. So for this project, I'm going to be using size US 6 or 4 millimeter knitting needles. And then I have some Cascade Hampton yarn. This is a DK or sport weight yarn. So if you are interested in substituting, definitely just look for that weight. And I'm going to start by uh, casting on 26 stitches with a long tail cast on. So I'm going to leave a decent amount of tail here, but nothing too crazy. And starting with a slip knot, I'm going to uh, situate the yarn so that the tail is facing downward from my palm and the working yarn is in my right hand here. I'm going to wrap that around my top three fingers here. And then if I spread my fingers out just a little bit, you can kind of see that there are two strands here. I'm going to take my index finger and go right through the middle of my yarn here, grab that second strand and let go of all of the other strands. So there is my little slip knot and I'm going to just put that on the end of one of my needles. And then for the long tail cast on, I'm going to take the tail of my yarn in my left hand so that it's just kind of resting for now. And then I have my working yarn in my right. And using my thumb, I'm going to go underneath that yarn. Then I'm going to bring my needle through the middle there so that it's right next to my thumb. Wrap my working yarn around. And then the loop on my thumb, I'm going to drop that right over the top of my knitting needle. So to show you that again, I'm going to take my thumb and go under the tail of my yarn. Then I'm taking my needle to go right up between that loop, right next to my thumb, wrap my working yarn around and drop that loop right over the tip of my needle. So there I've got three stitches and I'm going to cast on 26. And this will be the top portion of the hood of my cardigan. So there we've got six, seven, eight, nine. So I've now cast on 26 stitches and I'm going to take the tail of my yarn here and just kind of knot it up together, not very tightly because I will want to be able to undo this knot at the end, but this just kind of keeps me from getting confused as to what's my working yarn and what's the tail of my yarn. So it's just kind of a nice visual clue for me. And then I'm going to work in garter stitch for uh, 56 rows. So this is the top portion of the hood. It's the top or it's the tippy top of the head. And what garter stitch means is that I'm going to knit every single stitch. So as you can see, I'm going front to back in that first stitch, wrapping my yarn around and pulling through. Then I'm gonna just drop that off my left hand needle. And again, going front to back, wrapping around and pulling through. I'm going to do this all the way to the end of my first row. And this is the right side of my fabric. 
because it's in a garter stitch, it will be a little difficult to determine which side is the right side and which is the wrong side. But basically, when you're knitting, if the uh, tail of your yarn is on the right, then you're on the right side, and if it's on the left, you're on the wrong side. So I'm going to go ahead and knit to the end of this row, and then when I get to the end here, you can see there are no more stitches on my left hand needle, so I'm going to switch my right hand needle to my left and just go ahead and start knitting the second row here. And I'm going to continue until I have 56 rows. So I've gone ahead and knit a few rows here and I wanted to just quick stop and talk about how to count the rows if you are not using a row counter. So the easiest way that I've found to do this is have the right side of your work facing. So as you can see, I have the tail of my yarn on the right hand side and then I'm going to go ahead and count the ridges. So I have one, two, three, four, five, which is right here. This is the one that's touching my needle. And then I'm going to double that count. So that's uh, 10 rows that I've knit so far. So I'm going to keep going until I have 56 rows or is that 20, 28 ridges. So I've just finished knitting my 56 rows and I did end on a wrong side row. I have the right side facing, which you can tell because I have the yarn tail on the right hand side. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my yarn here. So we're going to take our scissors and cut that tail. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up one stitch between each of these ridges. So I'm going to be picking up 28 stitches. And the first one that I'm going to do, I'm essentially going to try to get as close to the edge as possible. So I'm going to start right there and I'm basically just putting my uh, working needle right through my fabric and I'm work, um, bringing my working yarn around that needle. I am holding it with my left hand here and I'm just going to pull a loop right through there and I'm going to keep picking up stitches right between each of these ridges. So if I go in to my fabric right between there and pull out, there's two and three, four. So here's 27 stitches and I'm going to pick up one more so that I have 28. And now we have the stitches that we were just working on ready to go. We're going to just knit right across there until all of these stitches have been worked. And then when we reach the end of these stitches, we're going to pick up 28 along this edge. There's one, two, three, and then pick up one more stitch right on that corner there, and there we go. And so now what we're gonna do is we're going to work back and forth in garter stitch, just like we did for that top portion. And I'm going to work garter stitch until the hood from this little edge here measures five inches. So if I go ahead and knit just a few stitches here, you can see that these stitches are going perpendicular to the ones on top. So we want to measure from this little line here, five inches. We're just gonna work garter stitch back and forth, knitting all of the stitches. My hood now measures about five inches from where we picked up the stitches here. And so I'm going to do just a few decrease rows. And to, in order to do that, I'm going to first count 26 stitches on both sides and place a locking stitch marker on those. So to do that, I'm going to go three, six, 
9, 12, 15, 18, 19, 20, 25, and 26. So then I'm going to slip my marker right on to that cable right between those stitches. And I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side. So let me see here. We've got five, 10, 15, 20, 25 and 26. So I'm going to take another stitch marker here and place it right between those stitches. And now I'm going to start my decreases. So with the right side facing here, I'm going to knit all of the stitches to that marker. So there should be 26 stitches here. Then as I reach my marker, I'm going to slip it to my right hand needle and then I'm going to work a slip slip knit or SSK. So I'm going to slip that first stitch knit wise and I'm going to slip the second stitch knit wise and then taking my left hand needle, I'm going to go right in between there and knit those two stitches together. So when I decrease, you can see that this kind of leans to the left a bit. So I'm now going to knit until two stitches before my next marker, and I'm going to do a decrease that leans right. So I now have two stitches before my next marker, and on these two stitches, I'm going to knit them both together as if they were one stitch in a K2 together. So I'm just going to go front to back on both stitches, wrap my working yarn around, and pull through, slip that marker, and knit to the end. Then on the wrong side of my fabric, I'm going to go ahead and knit all of these stitches, and I'm going to repeat those two rows seven more times. So I'm going to do that decrease row a total of eight times. So once again, I'm going to knit until I reach my first marker, then slip the first marker and work an SSK or slip slip knit. So slip one and two, then knit them together knit until two stitches before my marker, knit the next two stitches together as if they were one stitch, slip my marker, and knit to the end. And on the wrong side, I'm going to knit all the stitches and I'm going to repeat those two rows a total of eight times. So I've finished the hood of my cardigan and if you take a look, you can kind of see that it does have a rounded shape to it. And I did go ahead and remove my stitch markers because we are going to place new stitch markers so that we can start working on the raglan increases for the yoke. And the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to grab those same little interlocking stitch markers and I'm going to divide into different sections. So this first one is going to be a front panel. I'm going to count out 13 stitches. So there's three, six, nine, 12. And I'm going to place one stitch marker right there. And then I'm also going to mark on the other side of that, that next stitch. And that will be my um, raglan stitch. So we're going to put one on the opposite side of that. Then we're going to count out eight stitches and place another marker. So there's four, 
and eight. And mark a raglan stitch. And those eight stitches are going to be the first arm. So now we're going to count stitches for the back portion. And I'm going to count out 20 stitches here. So there's three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 19, 20. Mark that stitch. And put one on the other side. So that's my back. And then I'm going to count out eight more stitches for the sleeve. So there's four and eight. Mark one more stitch. And then I should have 13 left. So let's take a look here. There's three, six, nine, 12, and 13. So I'm going to now start working my increases. I'm going to knit that first row until I reach my marker because I do have the right side of my fabric facing me. So I'm gonna go right up to that first stitch marker. Now that I've reached my first marker, I'm going to make a stitch that is right leaning. And in order to do that, I'm going to take my left hand needle and go back to front right beneath my stitches here. So this little bar that kind of connects, I'm going to pick that stitch up and then I'm going to knit it as I normally would front to back. And that is going to make one right leaning stitch. You can kind of see that it's going off to the right here. Then I'm going to slip my marker, knit that stitch, slip the next marker, and then I'm going to make a left leaning increase. And to do this, I'm going to grab that same little bar there, but this time I'm going to take my left hand needle and go front to back on that little bar and rather than knit it normally I'm actually going to go behind and knit it through the back so I'm going right through here but knitting the back of that stitch and that's going to make it so that it's left leaning so I'm going to do that all the way across I'm going to knit to my next marker make one right leaning increase and so to do that I'm going back to front on that little bar there. And then knitting the front of that stitch, slipping my marker, knitting the next stitch, slipping that next marker, and then making a left leaning increase. So I'm going front to back on that little bar and then knitting the back of that stitch. There's the back, knit that, and continue to the end of this row. I just finished my first row of increases, so I've increased eight stitches throughout my work, and now I'm going to knit all of the stitches on the wrong side. And that's going to be my raglan increase pattern. I'm going to increase on every right side row and then knit all of the stitches on the wrong side row. While working these raglan increases, I am also going to be working on some buttonholes and I'm going to do these buttonholes every about two and a half inches or so. And to do these, I'm going to knit the first three stitches at the beginning of a right side row. And then I'm going to knit the
the next two together as if they were one stitch. So a K2 together. Then I'm going to do a yarn over. And the way that I like to do these is I just bring my working yarn right through the middle of my needles so that it's in the front as if I were going to purl. But I'm going to continue knitting. And as you can see, when I do that, it just creates a yarn over for me. So there's not any extra work. And now that I have my little buttonhole there, I'm going to go ahead and knit to my first marker. And now I can work my increases again. So I'm going to go from behind on that little bar there and knit the front of that stitch, slip my marker, knit that stitch, slip my marker again, and go front to back on that little bar and knit the back side of that stitch. And I'm going to do that all along the row so that I increase eight more stitches. And I'm going to continue working these increase rows for a total of 18 times. So I should have 218 stitches total by the time that I'm done. So I'm just going to keep working these increases followed by a knit row on the wrong side while at the same time making those uh, buttonholes every two and a half inches. I know it's a lot to remember and I would like to remind you that I do have the written instructions on my blog so you can feel free to take a look at that if you get a little confused and I do have all of the additional sizing information over there as well. So I'm going to keep working until I've increased 18 times. As you can see, I've been working my raglan increases here for a while and I have about two and a half inches between my last buttonhole and my current row. So I'm going to go ahead and knit another buttonhole. So I'm going to knit the first three stitches and then I'm going to knit the next two stitches together. Yarn over by bringing my working yarn between my needles and knitting the next stitch. And now I'm just going to keep working on those raglan increases until I have 218 stitches on my needles or I have worked my raglan increases a total of 18 times. So just a quick minor correction. When I was talking about how many raglan increases to do, I must have read my instructions wrong and I meant to do 18 more raglan increases rather than a total. But now I have 218 <laughs> stitches on my needles and we are going to divide the sleeves. So to do this, what I'm going to do is knit to my first marker. Then when I reach my first marker here, rather than slip it, I'm going to take it off, knit that raglan stitch, and take the next marker off. And now we have reached the first set of sleeve stitches. So I'm going to take a spare bit of yarn here, some scrap yarn, on a tapestry needle. And I'm going to slip all of these sleeve stitches onto my scrap piece of yarn so that we can work the sleeve stitches later. So I'm just gonna slip all of them purlwise onto my scrap yarn. So all of my sleeve stitches are on that scrap piece of yarn and I can take that next marker off. But before we continue knitting on this side, I do also want to cast on a few stitches for the underarm. So I'm going to turn my work so that the wrong side of my project is facing me. And I'm going to use a knitted cast on to cast on six more stitches. So in order to do that, I'm going to take my needle and bring it into that first stitch as if I were going to knit, wrap my yarn around, and pull it through but now what I'm going to do is rotate my right hand needle and slip the left hand needle right into that stitch so I've created one stitch and I'm going to keep doing that I'm going to bring my working yarn around 
pull it through, rotate, and slip it onto that left hand needle. So that's two and three, four, five, and six. And now I'm going to turn my work again so that the right side is facing me. Push those next few stitches forward and now I can continue knitting. So I'm going to knit that first raglan stitch, take that next marker off, and knit to the next marker. And here's my next marker. So I'm going to do the exact same thing that I did for the first sleeve. I'm going to take that first marker off and knit my raglan stitch. Then I'm going to take that next marker off and slip all of the sleeve stitches to a piece of scrap yarn using a tapestry needle. So we're going to go ahead and slip all of those stitches purlwise. And then once I have all of those stitches on my scrap yarn here, I can go ahead and remove that next marker. But before we knit this raglan stitch, we're going to turn our work to the wrong side and cast on six stitches using a knitted cast on. So just as before, I'm going to insert my right hand needle from front to back, wrap my working yarn around and pull that loop through then I'm going to rotate and put my left hand needle right into that loop. So there's my first stitch, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. And then I can go ahead and turn my work back to the right side and knit that raglan stitch. I'm going to go ahead and remove that last marker and knit to the end. And from here, I'm actually going to just work straight garter stitch, no increasing, no decreasing. Um, I'm just going to go until I have five buttonholes on my cardigan here. So far, this is what our project should look like. I've got my hood here, and then I've got the sleeves divided out and on some scrap yarn so that we can work them later. And we're just going to work back and forth on these main body stitches until there are five buttonholes. So I've got one two and I'm getting ready to knit a third and once I finish my fifth buttonhole then I will come back and we'll finish up the bottom part. So my cardigan is upside down here but you can see that I have one, two, three, four buttonholes and now I'm going to make one more. So just like all of the others I'm going to knit three stitches. So there's one, two, and three. I'm going to knit the next two together as if they were one stitch in a K2 together. Then I'm going to bring my working yarn right between my needles so that it's in the front and knit to the end of the row. Now that I have five buttonholes, I'm going to knit in garter stitch for half an inch more. Then we will come back and cast off. And I am going to be ending on a wrong side row. So we're going to cast off on the right side of our fabric. So I've knit half an inch past my last buttonhole here and I did finish on a wrong side row. So I'm ready to cast off and the way that I like to do this is knit the first two stitches as I normally would. So I'm going to take my left hand needle here and slip that into the first stitch I knit 
And then I'm going to kind of keep tension on my working yarn and slip that first stitch right over the second. So I'm going to keep doing that. I'm going to knit the next stitch so that I have two stitches on my right hand needle. Bring my left hand needle into that first stitch and pull it over the top of the second and just keep on going. So once I've cast off all my stitches, I'm going to pull that loop a bit, cut my yarn, and then pull that tail through my loop to close it up. So there we go. That is pretty much the cardigan. And then we're gonna go back, add some sleeves. And if you want, which is what I'm gonna be doing, I am going to be adding some little teddy bear ears on top as well. But this is where we're at. So let's go ahead and work on the sleeves. For the sleeves, I'm going to start by slipping all of these stitches that were on hold back onto my needle. Once those stitches are picked up, I'm going to find that little gap in the underarm where we cast on six stitches. And we're going to be working in the round, but in order to make the seam less visible, what I'm going to do is first pick up three stitches on the left hand side. So I'm going to insert my needle kind of in the middle here. So right about here. And then I'm going to grab my working yarn so that there's a bit of a tail that we can uh, weave in at the end and wrap my working yarn around as if I were to knit, holding it tight with my left hand and pulling up a stitch. Then I'm going to kind of find where I can pick up another stitch for a second one. And I'm going to do that one more time so that I have three stitches on my needle. And then I'm going to knit all of these stitches. Then once I've knit all of the sleeve stitches, I'm going to pick up three more on the underside of that arm. So we're gonna go right in. Let's see. Right in there for one. And two, and three. So since I have a longer cable here than I do stitches, what I'm going to do is work in the magic loop method. So I'm going to find kind of about the center mark of my stitches and pull that cable out so that I'm working on one group of stitches at a time while the others just kind of hang there and wait for their turn. And I'm going to start working in the round, but I'm going to continue working that garter stitch pattern. So since we just did a knit row, now what we're gonna do is a purl row. So we're going to go from back to front, wrap the yarn around and pull through. And we're going to work one round of knit and one round of purl to continue that garter stitch for a total of eight inches. But as we do that, we're also going to decrease on every 14th row. So we're going to decrease with seven of these ridges between. So I'm going to go ahead and continue working in garter stitch until there are um, seven of these garter stitch rows from where we picked up our stitches. So I've gone ahead and knit 14 rounds. So you can see that I've got seven rounds of garter ridges. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And now I'm going to do a decrease round. And I always wanna make sure that I'm doing this on a knit round. I'm going to knit the first stitch then I'm going to knit the next two together in a K2 together. So I'm going to go through both of those next stitches as if I were to knit a regular stitch. 
and I'm going to go ahead and knit the rest of this round until there are three stitches remaining on my needle. Okay, and on the last three stitches, I'm going to slip that first stitch knitwise, slip the next stitch knitwise, and then knit those two together in a slip slip knit or SSK. Knit the last stitch, and I'm going to repeat those decrease rounds four times total. So I've got three more decrease rounds to do, and I'm going to knit seven garter stitch row rounds in between each decrease. So there will be a total of 14 rounds between decreases, and then I will also be knitting until the sleeve measures eight inches from where we picked up stitches from the armpit. So let's just keep on going. I've now worked four decrease rounds. So there's one around there, one there, there, and there. My sleeve measures about eight inches from this underarm area. And now I am ready to cast off. And when I cast off, I'm going to do it the exact same way as when we cast off for the uh, body of the cardigan. So I'm going to knit the first two stitches, slip that first stitch over the top of the second, and continue casting off that way. So I'm going to knit the next stitch, slip that first stitch off, and keep on going. Then when I get to the end, I'm going to knit that last stitch, pull that first stitch over, kind of pull that loop up a little bit, get rid of that needle, and then kind of an easy way to um, finish off your work is to go ahead and cut the tail of yarn and holding onto that tail, I'm going to slip it through that loop. And my sleeve is done. Then just repeat for the other sleeve. And if you want to call it good for this cardigan, all you have to do is add some buttons and that's it. I'm actually gonna add some teddy bear ears to the hood. I think that'll be really cute. Then we'll add some buttons and this cardigan will be done. So as you can see, I did one ear already. And what I'm going to do is kind of go about halfway back. So I'm on this row right here. And if you can see, there's kind of a bottom and a top to each garter stitch. So I have the hood facing me, and I'm going to pick up in each of these bottom loops here, and I'm going to pick up seven stitches. So I've got my working yarn here. I'm going to pick up one, And then I'm going to look for the next bottom stitch. So here's two. Next one for three. Four. Five. six, and seven. Then I'm going to pull my needle out so that these are resting for now. I'm going to rotate my hood so the back of the hood is facing me now. And I'm going to kind of take a look here and see how many of the lower stitches I have now. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and we wanna pick up seven, so I'm gonna go with this one right here and pick up that stitch. And then I'm going to pick up the bottom stitches here. So there's two, three, four, 
over. Five. Six. And seven. Now we're going to turn our work again and we're going to work this little ear in the round. So on the first round, I'm going to knit the front and the back of this first stitch. So I'm going to knit as I normally would, but I'm going to leave that stitch on my left hand needle. And then I'm going to take my right hand needle and turn my work so that the back of the loop is facing. And I'm also going to wrap my working yarn around and knit the back of that loop as well. So that's increased a stitch. I'm going to knit the next stitch, knit the front and the back of this stitch. So there's the front and then I'm going to go behind and knit the back of that stitch, pull through. So I've increased another stitch. I'm going to knit that next stitch like normal, knit the front and the back of this stitch. So there's the front, there's the back, knit the next stitch and knit the front and the back of this stitch as well. Then we're going to turn our work again and we're going to do the exact same thing on this side. So I'm going to knit the front and the back of this first stitch, knit one, knit the front and the back, knit one, knit the front and the back, knit one, and knit the front and the back of that next stitch. Now we're going to work four rows of garter stitch. So I'm going to start with a purl round. So we're going to purl all of these stitches. When I reach the end of that round, I'm going to follow it up with a knit round. One more purl round followed by one more knit round. The bulk of the ear is now finished, so I'm just going to do a couple rounds of decreases starting on a purl row. And on these first two stitches, what I'm going to do is purl the two of those stitches through the back loop. So as you can see, I've got two stitches here and they're both on the back side of the stitch. And I'm going to kind of bring them forward a little bit so that I can wrap my working yarn around and pull that through. Then I'm going to purl seven stitches. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. These next two stitches I'm going to purl together as normal. So I'm going to go from the back to the front on those two stitches wrap my working yarn around and pull through, turn my work and repeat on the other side of the ear. So I'm going to purl two together through the back loop, purl seven stitches, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Purl the next two stitches together. And turn our work. On our next decrease round, what we're going to do is work a slip slip knit. So we're going to slip the first stitch knitwise as well as the second. And then we're going to slip our left hand needle into those two stitches and knit them together. Knit five stitches. So there's one, 
two, three, four, five. And then I'm going to knit these last two stitches together as if they were one stitch. And turn. I'm going to repeat the same thing on the other side. So I'm going to slip those first two stitches together and then bring my left hand needle in so that I can knit those two. Knit five stitches. So there's one, two, three, knit those last two together as if they were one. Then we're basically going to repeat the purl decreases. So I'm going to purl those first two stitches together through the back loop. Then I'm going to purl three stitches. So there's one, two, and three. Purl those last two stitches together and repeat on the other side. So we're going to purl two through the back loop, purl three, there's one, two, and three, purl the last two together, and one last time we're going to turn our work, but this time we're actually going to put all of our stitches on the physical needle here, and we're going to hold those needles parallel so that we can finish this all up with just a little Kitchener stitch. So what I'm going to do is leave a generous tail here and cut that from my working yarn. Then I'm going to slip a tapestry needle onto my tail here. and Kitchener this up. So I'm going to slide my tapestry needle purlwise on the first stitch of my front needle. And then I'm going to slip it knitwise on the back needle just so that we can set everything up nicely. And then we're going to repeat a four stitch pattern. So we're going to slip the tapestry needle knitwise on the first stitch of my front needle. And we're going to slip that first loop off completely. And then we're going to slip that tapestry needle purlwise onto the next stitch there. Then moving to the back needle, I'm going to slip my needle purlwise on that first stitch. And we can slip that off. And then I'm going to slip the tapestry needle knitwise through that next loop. So we're going to do that again. We're going to slip the needle through knitwise on the first stitch of the front needle and pull it off. Then we're going to slip it purlwise on the next stitch. Then we're going to go purlwise on the first stitch of the back needle and pull it off and then go knitwise on that next stitch. And we're going to keep working that way until all of the stitches have been worked. Then when you have two stitches remaining, what you can do is go knitwise on that front stitch with your needle. And then purlwise on the back stitch. Then just slip the needles out and you are done. So now I'm going to go back and weave in all my ends and then we can add some buttons on. So when I'm sewing on buttons, typically what I'll do is I'll take some embroidery thread and I'll just take one little strand from that embroidery thread and fold it in half. So this is probably going to be a little tricky to see just because it is gray and kind of blends in with everything. And I'm going to thread these two ends through my needle so that I have a loop at the opposite end. Then once I have my needle threaded, I'm going to take a look at the garment and figure out where I want the neatest spot to be. So because this uh, cardigan does have a hood on it, I'm not so concerned about where the top button is placed, but I do want to make sure that the bottom button is placed in the right spot. So I'm going to kind of overlap and find right where I want to put my button. And then I'm going to just kind of place it right 
where I want it. Then I'm going to take my needle and holding the fabric and button together so that they're right where I want them to be, I'm going to go up through one of those little holes and down through the one um, in, on the opposite side of that. But I'm not going to pull this all the way through quite yet. So I'm going to gently pull a little bit. I'm going to find that loop and bring my needle through the loop, which will tighten it up. Once I have my button in place, I'm going to grab a straight pin and slide it right underneath that first little loop on my button. And this will create um, a shaft for underneath the button that gives it a little bit of wiggle room and um, that way it doesn't pop off or sink into the fabric. So now I'm going to secure the button in place. So I'm going to go up through one of the holes I have not gone through yet and then down through the opposite side and then back up and over kind of making an X shape on the button then once I've done a few passes I'm going to remove my straight pin and my needle is on the back side, I'm going to just kind of slide my needle up underneath the button so that I'm kind of on the right side of the fabric but underneath the button. Now I'm going to wrap my um, thread around the button and I'm going to do that about six times. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and six, then I'm going to go right back down to the wrong side of the fabric. And I'm going to knot this off. So I'm gonna go under one of those little loops there. I'm leaving a little bit of space. I'm going to bring my needle right through the middle. Then all that's left is to cut this and finish making the button so that's it so that is how to knit up this little cardigan i think it turned out so well and i'm so pleased with it and um i hope you guys did too and if you did certainly give me a thumbs up and if you have any other requests for how to knit videos certainly leave me a comment in the comment section i do have a list of requests that have already been made that i'm working on so those should be coming out fairly soon uh, it does take a good amount of behind the scenes work but I am working on those. So yeah, if you have any requests, let me know. Uh, but as for right now, I think I'm gonna get going. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I really, really appreciate it. I hope you're having an amazing day and I will see you in my next video. Bye.